Hello, my name is Ted Holt, and I'm honored to work for Profound Logic Software. Today I will give you a quick introduction to Genie. I will assume that you have access to Genie, that someone has set up a skin for your shop to use, and that the Genie designer is turned on in the Genie administrator. If any of these are not true, you can still watch, but you may not be able to use Genie to modify your applications. At the end of this video, I'll give you a link to another video that can fill in some of these gaps for you. Genie's mission is to replace that wonderful green screen interface, which was great for its time, with a modern browser-based interface. After all, perception is reality, and we don't want people perceiving that your fabulous green screen programs are obsolete and ready to be tossed into the dumpster, do we? Of course we don't. So let's make them look modern. Genie modernizes a program by reading the 5250 data stream and converting to a browser interface on the fly. Genie is probably not the only tool that you will need to modernize your software, but it can probably handle a large percentage of your green screens. What Genie has going for it is this. First, Genie doesn't care what language your program is written in. CL, COBOL, old RPG, new RPG, it makes no difference. In fact, even System 36 RPG 2 is perfectly fine with Genie. Second, Genie doesn't care if a display file is internally or externally described. And third, Genie doesn't care if you have source code or not. Genie is a mighty accommodating piece of software, isn't it? Let me give you just a taste of what Genie can do with a simple green screen. Let's imagine that you and I support a factory, and that there's a certain assembly order pro report program that people use heavily. A CL program presents a prompt screen. The user fills in the blanks and presses F9, and a new batch job is born to build the report. The program needs to know which assembly line to report on, how far into the future to look, and whether or not to include a summary page at the end. There's also an entry field for a comment that can be added to the report. Let's replace that green screen with this. It's not hard to do. We just need to make a few simple adjustments. First, we start the program. I'm going to do that by calling the program from the command line. There's no reason we couldn't start the program from a menu instead, of course. I'm using a skin named Hybrid. Notice that it converts the function key legend into links on a menu bar at the left side of the screen. Everything the skin handles is one less thing that you have to concern yourself with. The continue option is a link that simulates pressing the enter key. The first button on the design toolbar reads design mode is off. So let's click on it to turn on design mode. The first thing I need to do is give this screen a name so Genie can keep up with it. I'll call it the same name as the CL program. QDP 0180C. Next I need to tell Genie how to distinguish this screen from all other screens. This is a prompt screen for a CL program and no other programs use this screen so I can use the program name in the upper left hand corner. I right click on the program name and select mark as identifier. It's not a bad idea to save our work. I try to remember to save frequently. I click on the save screen button in the design toolbar. Now let's make the screen look a little bit more modern. I'll start by changing some of the input fields into browser widgets. We have four assembly lines indicated by the numbers one through four. So rather than have the user key a number, I can let him pick from a list. I right click on the line field and change and select change to drop down. 
The field is too short to show anything, so I'll expand it a bit. There are two ways to load the list of line numbers. I can key in the acceptable values, or I can read them from a table. Reading from a table is usually the better option, but I'm going for the former method in this example. In the Choices property, I key the digits 1 through 4, separated by commas. Next, I right click on the cutoff date field and select change to date field. Since the user keys the date in month, day, year format with no separators, I change the date format property to MMDDYY. The CL program will never know that the user didn't key the value. Next, there's a field where the user enters a Y to get a summary page on the end of the report. That's a good application for a checkbox. I right click and select Change to Checkbox from the context menu. Then I go to the properties and change the check value to Y and the uncheck value to N. The message ID field is just text, so we can leave that as a text box. It's not a bad idea to save our work again. Let's give it a quick test just to be sure everything works properly to this point. Click on Design Mode is On to exit Design Mode. The program is running again. I fill in a few values. and click Submit. And there's my report. Looks good. Now let's make this prompt screen look a little more like a browser app. As before, I call the program and I enter Design Mode. Those literals just don't work, so I'll hide them and add some labels instead. To align the labels, I use the control key and click to select all of them. From the context menu, I choose Align Rights. While they're selected, I can resize them and move them around all together if I need to. Next, I'll add a simple panel to give the idea of a form. Looks like I need to move some things around.
Let's give the panel a nice title. How about open assembly orders? In fact, let's just go ahead and put that program name in the title while we're at it. That calls for a little JavaScript. Clicking on the program name tells me that the output field is D underscore one underscore three. So the title for the panel will be script open assembly order open parenthesis plus get D one three close quote. And there's my title. Okay, now I can hide all this header information. So I will use control and click. Select those and hide them from the context menu. Web pages often use buttons to do the same sorts of things we use function keys to do in green screen applications. So let's add a couple of buttons. One to submit the request to batch and another to exit the screen without submitting. I like these graphic buttons. I prefer them to the, the usual buttons. So I'm going to add just a couple of buttons here. I could change the text of the green button to say submit, but accept is okay, so I'll leave that as it is. But I do need to make this button work like the F9 key. I change the on click property down here at the bottom, on click to press key quote F9 quote, close print. I'll also make the cancel button, press the F3 key. Press key. Now I don't need that F key legend on the left, so I'm going to hide that. I have to hide everything by clicking each widget and using hide from the context menu. So now I can right click to choose save and exit design. Let's see what we've got. Fill in the blanks. We'll choose line one. Cut off date, we'll go through the end of July. Include summary, sure, why not? Message, let's just say this is for Chuck. And we'll accept. And there's my report. Yep, looks like it worked. I'll be the first to admit that this is not an elegant web page, but it certainly doesn't look antiquated, and it only took a few minutes. I should mention that the green screen version still works as it always did. So if some of your people prefer to continue to use the green screen version, they certainly may do so. Be aware that these customizations are tied to the skin. If you call this program while using a different skin, you won't see any of these customizations. I have shown you how to identify a screen to Genie, how to convert an entry field from a text box to a widget, how to replace constant text with something more suitable, 
how to replace function keys with buttons, how to hide undesired fields and literals. There is so much more you can do with Genie. So after you've played with and mastered these simple techniques, please watch the Genie demo video at this URL.